first things that struck me when I got asked to do this and speak at such a prestigious event was, ah, what am I going to talk about? And then I got over that, and that was fine. But the second thing, and all us women, kind of, what is the second thing that will really hit us? I'm going to say it, ladies. It's the afternoon on a Friday. What will I wear? <laughs> OK, the ensemble is absolutely online. <laughs> Size will fit. I'm going to say it, because that's exactly what it comes into our minds. But you know something? There's something really, really good about that, because it makes us unique, it makes us confident, it makes us be able to stay up on the stage here today and be able to talk to yourselves as well. So, Anita had a roomie, and I thought it was a great expression. So my roomie is going to have a roommate, and from now on, she's going to be called Anita. So, let's get started. I came across this quote quite recently. I gladly risk my job to advance an idea. Many of us would really do that. This woman did. And there are many women like her. Yvonne Brill, a rocket scientist, no less. She wanted to study engineering, but because of her gender, she couldn't. So instead, she went into maths and chemistry. This is a woman that has propelled satellites into space, and she's recognized by her peers. And in 2011, President Barack Obama awarded her the Technology and Innovation Medal. Now, here is a woman that I'm pretty sure, over her years in this particular field, she leaned in. She leaned in a lot. She leaned, probably leaned in to the point that she fell over. But maybe her voice got heard. Over the time she got back up, she made her voice heard, and in 2011, it was absolutely recognized. She was, to coin a phrase, a woman before her time. I'm very proud to work for an organization called Enterprise Ireland. And we work with people. We work with individuals. We work with teams. We have a global ambition to work throughout our offices. We're headquartered in Ireland. We've got 32 offices worldwide. And that's one hell of a network for a small country. We're incredibly proud of our market advisors overseas. And our offices overseas are a door opener to companies to gain market intelligence and also to gain a foothold in many companies, uh, countries around the world. So what is it that we want to do in terms of driving global ambition? We want to work with companies from the very early stage startup companies right the way through to some of our multinational companies. We want to scale companies and we want to ex ex extend global reach. It's in the true spirit of innovation that we have created an ecosystem in Ireland with our sister agencies, IDA Ireland and SFI. In 2016, over 1,000 companies on our books collaborated with the third level sector here, with the brightest of minds in the academic community. These are very unique technology centers, and what they brought was the best of minds between an early stage startup company a medium-sized companies and large companies in together to collaborate on research and development. And the reason being is that my experience and that of my colleagues is that companies need to innovate. We need to look at what we're doing today. You need to look at your businesses and your customers and how you take that innovation capability that you have, harness it, and be able to draw it further. What it has shown us is that from the very early entrepreneur startup company coming into these technology centers, is they gain two very, very valuable things. The first, that they actually can stress test their technology. And that's really, really critical. Have they a platform that they can scale? Do they know where they're going in terms of medical device usage? The other thing that they gain is they gain commercial awareness. They have people who have gone there before them. They have people who are able to open doors to them. So innovation is incredibly important, particularly in the current era where companies need to expand. What many of you might not realize is that Enterprise Ireland is an investor. We currently have investments in over 1,500 companies. 
we have and we are a funder of funds. And in 2018, the funds that Enterprise Ireland will have raised since 1994 is 1.9 billion. This is really, really significant. And so what are we doing with that type of investment? From the early stage entrepreneur, we get last year about 2,000 inquiries. And of those 2,000 inquiries, it breaks down to about 900 business plans, excuse me. And from those 900 business plans, <clears throat> it breaks down to about 450 companies, startups, that we invite into our high potential startup unit. <coughs> Pardon me. Last year, we invested in 128 companies from a commercial, a competitive start fund, which is about 50K, and we invest a significant amount of money in 104 companies. We work with these companies in a variety of different ways, and it's not just financial assistance that we give them, but we actually have management for growth, leadership for growth, competitiveness, and team building in terms of growing their companies. <coughs> Excuse me if I don't make you deaf. So we wrap our arms around companies in terms of being able to grow them, being able to look at the markets that they need to drive into, and we've got incredible experience in being able to do that. And where we lack some experience, we have a huge network globally to be able to drive forward. So the numbers on the chart here are very, very significant to us. 43 female founders in 2014 and 63 in 2016. It's going in the right direction. In 2011, our CEO, Julie Cinnamon, then an executive director of Enterprise Ireland, took a look at our numbers uh, of female founders. In the 2011, it was about 7%. I won't even give you the numbers. It was very, very low. So Anne has mentioned, and you're an audience who are incredibly familiar with what needs to be done. So we did it. I'm really, really proud to be part of an organization that put the spotlight on female entrepreneurs. Lack of role models. We brought in role models. Some of you are in the room, both male and female, but particularly female. Lack of networks. We created ne networks. We went out to female founders worldwide and, and sought their experience to bring it back to our own founders. Someone said to me, lack of ambition was an issue. It wasn't lack of ambition with an idea. It was lack of ambition to push forward and actually ask for that investment. Really ask for that investment that you know will make a critical difference to your company. So I'm incredibly proud, and of a number of colleagues in the audience, likewise, because that's where we shone the spotlight on. We'll keep going at this. And we'll also keep growing in terms of adding another dimension, adding diversity into startup teams that we see. Because 63 isn't enough. And we would hope to get to a point where we've shone a light on female entrepreneurship to come in for our competitive start fund. We've deliberately gone out and, and, and sought female founders. We didn't change the fund, but we targeted the messaging and we wrapped a lot of supports around female founders. We would hope to get to a point where we actually don't need to do that anymore. That this becomes the norm. But it's not the norm today. And because it's not the norm today, we'll continue to do it. And our CEO has that mantra, and she will continue to drive and develop more female founders. So bringing it back to myself, I am passionate about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I, and I, there's a few fellow judges for the BT Young Scientists in the audience as well. A good shout out to them. Every year we go into the RDS and there are hundreds of secondary level school students. And it is an absolute privilege to be involved in that, to be involved in the buzz in that, to see a lot of females coming in on the junior section. We lose some of them in the intermediate section. 
And some stage on the ICT side, there are very, very few in the senior. And there's a whole variety of issues around that in terms of why we're dropping numbers. So at every opportunity I get, I will promote within schools. I will look to see what I can do as an individual. And I have a lot of colleagues that I rope in to help me do this. But to be politically correct, it's actually STEAM. Folks, I've figured out the A. I've absolutely figured out the A. I nailed it earlier today. The A absolutely stands for anodie. <laughs> and if it doesn't, it should. But however, it's the arts. So, my final slide is Banksy. Winners are not those who never fail, but those who never quit. That's what we have to remember. Because this diversity is way, way too important. You have to be unique in terms of what you do. You have to be passionate about what you do, and you have to love what you do to be good at what you do. I did try and locate Banks, see, could I see, could I use that? But I couldn't find him or her. So from a copyright point of view, I think I'm safe. So I would like to leave you with a few words, and I'm going to do my very best, I'm going to have to read this. Oscailga, in Irish, from a fantastic Irish band called Kila. Be gasca, be croiga, be clishta, be kintha, be kashka, be glick, be griever, galgeric, be sucker, lastig, be quick, be brave, be clever, be sure, be tricky, be sharp, be loving, light-hearted, and steady inside. Thank you very much.